Welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time to continue on with the top 10s of each class for June 2024. We've been counting them all down. We're going to finish up with the top 30 champions in the whole game. We have the best champions of 2023, best champions of 2024. And then what you're looking at right here is my Discord server's rankings compiled by none other than Aiden Egatron. Aiden, I'm sorry I didn't get your logo on this one, buddy. I think you know how busy I am today as I'm recording so many of these. So I, I do hope you understand. If you've already seen how we tabulate all this, the, the things we go through, the rating system and categories we go through every single month for the monthly tier list that we've been doing over four years with myself and MCOC Illuminati, you can totally skip that and you can just go right down into the description, hit that timestamp and jump right to where we'll cover my Discord server's rankings and then of course mine and the Illuminati's as well. All right, let's jump into this very quickly. And remember, if you've already seen how this format works, go ahead and just jump to the timestamp that I've listed in the description and get right to the rankings. Now, this is how we've broken down every single champion, rated them. This is when I talk about the thoroughness, the hours, the debating, going back and forth. It is a lot of fun, but this is how we do it. And then this is how they're all scored. And every month that is presented in the general tier list, we've been doing this for, I think, four years now. So let's go over this and this is how they're going to be listed now. There are four, essentially, there are four categories. They're not equally weighted, but there are four general categories. There's ease of use, battlegrounds, war, and general. And then general is a, an added up score of those other four categories. And we'll talk about them when we get to them. Ease of use, this is worth about three points. This is the epitome of it is uh, Sunspot. I know often we think of like their parry heavy champions, like an Archangel being the easiest to use. And I'm not saying they're not, but we are including champions like Sunspot, phenomenal champion, not a knock on him. And in fact, I know many players like the spreadsheet because they can configure it for ease of use, even though I always present it every month without ease of use. For the sake of these rankings here in June, we will be including ease of use. Moving on to Battlegrounds, this is worth 10 points. And you see my Battlegrounds rankings every single month. We've been doing that since before Battlegrounds even came out. We're now adding even the scores so you can see them. Photon is a 10 out of 10 in the dual threat category. She's a very good defender, a menacing defender. There are some very good counters for her though. If you pull Photon, someone pulls a Mantis, you throw her on attack, and there's a lot of meta defenders that she is very, very good for. So she's the perfect example, the 10 out of 10 in Battlegrounds. Moving on to War. War is in an interesting place, and I won't take too much time for this, uh, for that discussion in this. But in war, the relevance really there was outside of sagas, outside of metas and these sorts of things, attacker tactic, defender tactics. Who are the champions? Who are the few champions that when you're, you're in tier one, you're two, two, you're really pushing, I don't know, tier three. Who are the champions that are almost always someone you're looking to assign? Yes, there's going to be times and uh, metas and defenders, things like that can X them out. But some champions just flat are more usable than others in war and tiger is definitely the 10 out of 10 at least for now in war that's an example of that now moving on to general you have a total score of 15. this is the biggest because i know not everyone does war no not everyone does battlegrounds but everyone plays the game and this is broken down into long form you can get up to three points for this this is the most heavily weighted on necropolis we've had like all the various of legends content and of course grandmasters gauntlet and then now there's the eop and things like that all of them are going to be presenting different challenges defenders node sets trap nodes and those sorts of things and then of course like an eop there's even our hashtag objectives and things like that but there are champions that we can say especially looking at necropolis just appear to be better in long form than others you think of your kate bishop wong Aegon, Shuri, those sorts of things. Champions have all been rated across there for their ability to ramp up and then maintain that ramp. You think of like Danny Moonstar, she can do massive damage after a ramp, but it starts all over. Very rarely you're gonna be using her for your long, long form, maybe an EOP sort of thing. Probably not in the Necropolis or the next version of Necropolis when it comes out. Moving on to flow. Spider Ham is the epitome of this. In fact, it's when I came up with the term flows when I first covered him years ago when he came into the game. I'm gonna read it to you. How well do a champion's abilities and specials fit together? How easily does a node or a defender or an AI throw off the attacker? How relevant is that in today's game? Example is Spider Ham is a five out of five. I literally came up with this term and this definition because it is different than ease of use with Spider Ham. You need his power scene, he's got it. He can he can apply them without even needing power. You need a taunt, he's got one for you. You need an evade, it's available. All of the specials do something, they help him out. You land the heavy to keep uh, his spider nonsense high. You gotta play him well. 
I don't have him as a three out of three ease of play. He's high though. <laughs> But it's his flow, in my opinion, his flow and his budget and his meta that make him so incredibly powerful. Moving on to budget. Um, this is also a bit worth five points. How many relevant abilities and immunities are in the champion's kit? Utility brought to a fight and also damage is part of this. So yes, you may not have the most utility, but if you got enough damage, you're gonna get at least a decent score of this. Hercules, right? You want him to crit? He can crit. You want big crits? He can do that too. You want to go unblockable? He can do that. Yeah, you got to get close to death, but still, he can do it. He can just do so many things. He has relevant resistances. He's a phenomenal champion. His synergies are great. Five out of five budget. Everything that could be packed into one single champion and still be in this game is there. Five out of five budget. There are a few other five out of fives, but Herc is uh, my favorite example of it. Meta, this is the one that we really need to stay on top of. Really when we're talking often, if you see me promote or demote a champion, or when I come out a little bit like hesitant or conservative on them when they're new, it's their meta score that's quote unquote holding them back or moving them up because I'm just not sure how they're going to be used. And then as time shifts on, some champions become better in the meta and some become worse. Like CGR's meta score has actually gone up as late. We've talked about that a lot on this channel. And if you think about uh, Hulkling, I actually talked about on stream today, he came out as a penny counter. But he was so good and across so many ways, and some of its flow and some of its budget too, that he's not just for your tech champions. Like if you think about future Ant-Man, he happens to have a pierce. So a lot of your tech champions who are problematic, Iron Man Infinity War is coming back. Well, Hulkling can go unblockable. But he's also then good outside of that. He's got his resistances, or I'm sorry, he's got his immunities and those sorts of things. But Onslaught comes out very problematic defender, no like seemingly hard counters outside of Havoc necessarily, but people were using Hulkling for Onslaught. He's just so meta relevant. This can shift. This is the one that we're always keeping our eye on and why champions get promoted and demoted. Hopefully you have a really good understanding of how the tier list works, the scoring and all of that. All right, as we take a look at my Discord server's rankings, one, thank you everyone for voting. I, you guys know how much I love that server and you all and hanging out with you. And Aiden, thank you for compiling. I do feel horribly about the logo. Um, the two things I wanna call out that I think are gonna be just very different than when you see my tier list here in a few seconds is one, Cap America Infinity War. Now we have a very loyal Cap America Infinity War player on my server, what's up, O's fan? Uh, and you know what? One, I think that's great. You should play the game and have fun, and that means going to be ranking up and having fun with the champions you enjoy. But two, he's also right. Cap is fantastic, and let's not lose sight of that. The other one I want to point out is, is Quicksilver, and because of the way we are tabulating this for the top 10s, he actually is falling out of the top 10 on my tier list with the Illuminatis, and that's purely because of the ease of use score, right? That's something that we add when I present the tier list every single month. I actually purposely uncheck that box but I, we do have it, we do have that category, especially that uh, Spreadsheet Wizards added it on because they were like, hey, look, not everyone, or better put, some people are really gonna care about the ease of use category. It's gonna help them make decisions. And I thought, you know what, guys, if, you, if you're willing to add that like ability for people to conform the tier list to the way they want, you're gonna add on a whole nother category, I am happy to go ahead and give all these champion scores. And they did it. And so as a result, Quicksilver was actually going to fall out of my top 10, but I love that my server made sure uh, that he was in this one because I do think he's that powerful. He's just a little more tricky to play. All right, let's go ahead and get to my rankings. All right, now we're at mine and the, the Illuminati's rankings, and obviously number 10 is going to be uh, Void. It's actually a three-way tie the way the scoring worked out. But before we talk about that, I wanted to go over the honorable mentions real quick, which is Joe Fixit, uh, Spider-Man 2099, Miguel, The Overseer, Mr. Fantastic, and Quicksilver. As I mentioned earlier, and I, what reminded me to mention it was the scoring of Quicksilver. So I was like, wait, why is he not in my top 10? And again, it's easy use is starting to come into play. It is being included for these rankings when we do the monthly tier list. I purposely present it without that and then allow you with the spreadsheet to go ahead and click that uh, button so you can see that when you go for your own looking at it uh, as well. So just keep that in mind as we move on. Now, uh, number 10, Avoid, again, tied for the number nine spot. It, it, is, it almost blows my mind that in... I mean, we're beyond six years of Void being in this game, and it shows you how great he was when he came in, how relevant, and how even though as the game has evolved and grown and become more complex, his abilities stay fantastic, right? 
one of the similar things that make him very unique in this class. Although I'm going to call him, he is tanky. Uh, and I don't think that tankiness is just due to uh, specking into inequity, right? Which is what's reducing the attack rating of your opponents with all of those debuffs. He just has a nice large health pool. <laughs> uh, he's, he's really good at that. He's been tanky for a long time. Uh, he's got that petrify that he gets going, right? So he's handling uh, the healing and the power gain for you. It just take him a little while to get ramped up. But for a while, we started to kind of hold that against him. It felt like the game was asking us often to just get that going immediately and Void felt a little slow for it. But again, as he's continued to develop, as the games continue to grow, there's become more and more space for fights where if you play well, you can get him going. They give you the time to get that going. And then of course he does have incinerate immunity. So he's even coming with at least some nodes and those sorts of things or defenders that he can take. Really great champion. He's never been one I've loved playing him, uh, but I can't deny he is a fantastic, fantastic champion. All right, let's get to the other champion he is tied with. I mean, you're going to give me an opportunity to talk about Red Guardian. I'm going to talk about Red Guardian, right? Uh, I, I, I like his buff was so good, and I covered it on the uh, the CCP beta. And I remember being like, I don't think they know how good they made him in long form, but I, I have to show it, right? Like they're eventually going to find out. Like, and it's not like I'm the only person who's going to notice. So I did show it, and uh, sure, lo and lo behold, sure enough, within days, uh, they nerfed. Yes, they did. They kids, uh, they nerfed the buff, right? But they didn't do it afterwards. Like, it's fine, in my opinion. It's when we get all crazy and outrageous about it that it becomes a problem. And by we, I mean the player base. Guys, let's tone that sort of stuff down. Let's give grief when it's warranted, not when it's not. Uh, and that was the buff, and that was the point of the beta, right? And yes, that was tuned down. The short form was tuned up a little bit. And lo and behold, we've got a Battlegrounds questing war monster. He is buff immune with all of this massive, massive burst. As I talked about in that, I just, it's amazing. He has the slow off the SP1 and it's refreshable, easily refreshable while still maintaining his damage. You don't have to choose between his damage and his utility. You get to the SP2 with your shield up and you just destroy it. He's based on having crits, and he has a very high crit rate. Now, sometimes he doesn't crit, and that's been happening to me a little bit in the current Battlegrounds meta, but I don't care because it's an informed decision, and that's like what he has because the results and when it works are so outrageous that it makes sense to me, but sometimes it's not going to work. I'm the one that chose to roll the dice. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I love this character. I love playing him. I love this. I love everything, and I hope that he comes as a seven star. I don't think he's too overpowered for it at all. So Kabam, please put him out as a seven star. And if you haven't seen my videos on him and you're not sure why I'm talking so highly on him, please go check him out. Uh, if he was a seven star, it's a tough list because science is so good, but I can already see a couple champions that I do think he'd be above. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the other champion he's tied with. I know, and I know, I know a lot of you, you're my most loyal, Viewers will be like, oh, Vega, I knew you liked Luke Cage because you've heard me talk about it. You pay attention to the monthly tier list, these sorts of things. Maybe you even are familiar with the, vi uh, the video I'm going to shout, which is Jaeger's video on Luke Cage. The buff was him. Let Here, I'll just help you out. Here's the too long didn't read. DLL helped design his buff. I know, I know, like, probably half of you just turned this off and went to see if you have Luke Cage, okay? Um, because the fact of the matter is, is you know that the champion's going to be relevant. You know, this can be a champion. As someone who plays a game, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Let me go read these abilities a second time. And you're going to be like, oh, he can turn off the ability accuracy? I didn't know that. Oh, these exhaustions do something and give him massive power burst? Cool. Oh, the signature ability, they did change it. Mm -hmm. that is, this cut negatively, but wait a minute. I can still go indestructible, and this is making a lot of sense with his kit. This is an awesome kit with tremendous damage. He even has a Sunder, and for those who aren't familiar with Sunder, is that takes the crit resistance of a champion, a defender, and makes it go to zero, which is very common in the Mystic class, especially champions like Doom and Rintra. This is a great champion. Even has the bleed immunity. Trust me, I get it. And I, I call him Tiny Dancer because he's Blue Jean Baby, right? Seton taught us all that. I don't think he called him Tiny Dancer. I added that up. But, again, this champion's been in the game since, like, almost launch. 
At least that's how it feels. December 2014. November 2014. So I understand. It's like when I pulled Havoc. And I wasn't excited. And it's because like I just wanted something new. And I fully get it. But here's what I'm saying. If I pull him, the only reason why I won't be elated is because science is so stacked and strong. And I already have so many champions fighting for my re rank up resources. But I will be very excited because I've just pulled what, no joke, I feel strongly is the number nine, tied for nine, rated champion in the science class. Go read through his kit again. See how tanky this boy is and see how much damage he can produce all with the ability to reduce ability accuracy off of his spe special two while still maintaining his damage loop. You don't have to pick between the utility and the damage. Oh. Now let's move on to the number seven, another tie. Spider Ham is a stone cold killer that has only aged better in the game. I love him. Like I love, I love the silliness, the goofiness, the playfulness while being just a straight up killer. And he is. Battlegrounds has given him his place to shine. I felt strongly years ago. I did the video on him years ago. He, he had a place in war. Science being as strong as it was and became, and with their ability to handle power rate, he never got used that much because he is a little squishy if he gets hurt. But the thing is. He does have things that mitigate that threat, right? He's got his evades and his auto evades. He's got the taunt. If you spec into inequity, he's got so many debuffs on, he's reducing the damage. And then if you can keep his spider nonsense high, which you can do by landing your heavy. If you're if you are interested in spider ham and you're interested in really getting into the nitty gritty with him and like playing him better in some of those tight spots and getting the power sync stamp, manage your spider nonsense. And you do that through the heavy. I believe you lose two spider nonsense from the heavy, right? So you can keep it consistently high. And then his loop or his flow is just outrageously good. He's not protected. This is not a flawless champion at all. And if you play poorly, you're gonna mess up and die. But Battlegrounds has given him a space to absolutely shine because he's able to get up his porker poppers, land those, and then make the opponent basically kill themselves so he's not fully getting around defensive threats in the way that like a werewolf by night is or Valkyrie or something like that. But he is getting around threats in, an, in a way that we're not used to seeing and isn't like clearly defined in his kit. You have to play him. And then you realize, oh, I parry and I medium medium. I get these power stings up. And even if I never get power, I can at least do some damage and get some damage done. Really, really phenomenal champion. I absolutely love him. I don't think he's moving down or up. And as I look at the list, actually, I think there's a chance, depending on what science champions come up over the course of the year, he may actually move up in the rankings. All right, and Spider-Ham is now tied, actually, with Cassie Lang at number seven. And I was literally looking at her when I said there's a chance he moves up in the rankings. Uh, and I was looking at her when I was talking about Luke Cage as well. And it's for a couple of reasons. Now, you know, I think I'm one of the last big Cassie Lang fans left. Uh, I think, yeah, I said that correctly. And the irony is I still have her at rank four. I am not using her as much. I, I fully admit that. And a lot of that's due to me having left tier one war and then her not being tactic. And then she did have the bug issue, but then that got fixed. No pun intended on that one. But I think it's important to remember all the things that are in her kit and how good her loop is, right? She's uh, essentially a triple immune, right? She has the two flat out immunities and then she's buff immune as well. You add those all together, you've already got something very intriguing. She has the ability to do really large sting damage. Not as big as, as Spider-Ham, but I think it makes sense given her ultimate immunities and things like that. Plus, she's incredibly tanky. I remember showing the war videos of her and like taking a hazard shift lane and just, it, I was healing from the debuffs at a point in time. She's great. I hope that she does come out as a seven star. I don't see why she wouldn't come out as a seven star. And I think when that does, the community is going to be reminded how great she is. Now, I will say that in the last few months, you know, because like I said, myself and the Illuminati, we go over the stuff every single month when we refresh these. We want to make sure we're, we're recognizing the meta and things like that. She has started to come up as a champion who potentially should get moved down. And one of the things that's uh, being spoken about is the AI, and it does make her a little more difficult to play. 
you know, one of the things that made her so exciting was like getting the opponent in the corner and utilizing your uh, shrink down mechanic. And you could really start to stack the power stings and get the damage going. And if the AI is not cooperating in the way that you think they should, right? And the AI shouldn't do that every time. Like it shouldn't be a face roll game. But I, I have to say, like you've heard me talk about this with Gladiator where I'm like, I'm not enjoying Gladiator as much because I'm having trouble controlling the AI or even reacting to the AI with him. And if that continues to happen with Cassie, then she is just going to get moved down. And so that's why I'm pointing at her is because she's not out as a seven. There are other champions who can kind of do what she does. There are other buff immunes, and there is Ant-Man as well, too. So unless there's immunities required, you're often not bringing her. So because of all of that and then the lack of the seven star, I could see her moving down, and that would be purely due to Metascore. I still think she's great. Number seven champion in one of the most stacked classes in the game. But I do want to at least bring that up, that next year when we do these ratings, you might not even see her on the list, or at least honorable mention, still amazing, just not as good. All right, Silk, we got to take a second and talk about her, because she's got the, the Sunder, right? Removing the uh, crit resistance. She has absolutely bonkers massive burst, right? At the time of her coming in the game, July of last year, I had a rank two Sasquatch and a rank two Mangog. And all of a sudden, this character, Silk, started obliterating them in Battlegrounds. They went from my two best defenders to basically having no value at all if my opponent had Silk. She also has the slow off of her uh, signature ability. And if you get that up high enough, it can start to counter. I think it's healing, but it's mitigated to only win the slow. It seems very designed to counter um, Sasquatch, which is great. He needs counters. But, and I love, I, I, I actually can't say that I love Silk because I've pulled her and I just haven't used her that much. She's not easy to play, but she's not overwhelmingly difficult, at least not in some of your basic Battlegrounds matches. I see what Fintech does with her in War, and I think he is doing very complex things, especially with the SB3 and then the complex combos he's coming out with and utilizing the striker, which she's clearly built with. She also has that amazing evade, a special evade in her kit as well. So she isn't tanky necessarily, but she can help you get you out of trouble. But in a way, I almost kind of blame her for things like Spider Punk not landing well. Because she took the bar for what we thought of when we wanted a battleground science nuke. And she, like, destroyed it. Like, whatever the record was, she took it from, like, here. I'm going to make sure it's like, from, like, here to, like, here. Like, there was all this space that could have been in between. And she just jumped way farther ahead. And now you have a champion like Spider-Punk. And that's fine. Like, it's fine. I love Spider-Punk. I'm the one telling you guys I think he's still great. But that's the thing with, with Silk. And we see her do great things in war. And she's very good in questing as well. I think she's her where she shines on why so many of the community love her so much is in her nuke qualities in Battlegrounds. It's what she was designed to do. She does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. She does need to stun, and it is a debuff. It's not like America Chavez with the passive. So she has more mitigating fat or more ways to be slowing down. I'm very much looking forward to one day awakening myself and making her a part of my active deck that I'm constantly cycling in and out. All right, let's move on to a two-way tie for number four. Tied for number four is Human Torch. Uh, he's clearly on his way down, but number four in the best, and probably the best, or what many people consider to be the best class in the game, means you're doing a OK. This is purely, like, absolutely one of purely due to not being as a seven-star, right? You can ascend him and get as much as you can out of him. Uh, his pre-fight ability is kind of, like, ridiculous. Uh, but it, it, but I'm, I mean, I'm glad it's there as a player. I've enjoyed it. Thanks to PVP with Battlegrounds, we're now, uh, we're now forced to face these things. And I think it, it, we can often think about like, oh, this feels cheap or what have you. But it is what it is. We're all aware of that. Uh, there's really not much to say about him because he's been in the game for so long, right? It, if it, it, I'm not going to make this long video longer talking about what Human Torch does. He's really unique because of his Nova Flame, his ability to have the pre-fight, get that first single fight, and then just absolutely obliterate what is almost anything that is in his way. He's incredibly strong against Mystics and energy damage. He was great in Abyss of Legends and still very good in Battlegrounds and in some war fights as well. And he can even counter miss. And yes, 
they buffed him. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the other champion tied at number four. All right, we're on my boy Hulk, right? And like, it, the guy smashes. They did a great job with his buff. I absolutely love it. It was one of the buffs that went live and I just sat down and just started playing. I was like, clear my calendar. I'm playing this character today. I think I did, um, I did a couple of videos on him within like the first week. He does massive physical damage. He's massive, massive bursts. Uh, and then he's got the passive fury. So he is not buff immune. But the buff that he does get is passive. If you got him awakened, he goes unstoppable, right? When he triggers his Gamma Rage, he actually gets stronger as he loses health. But in most like Battlegrounds, you obviously don't want that to happen. And he has more than enough damage. When the SP2 crits, things die. And if that doesn't happen, you can get into the Hulk stun lock, right? With the SP1. And if you really just want more and more damage, you can go to the special three uh, and it boosts all the physical damage as well. I, he's poison immune. He's absolutely a blast to play. And uh, I'm really glad that Kabam put him into the game. He feels like the sort of champion that they don't tend to make that much uh, that often. And yet I think it's great that they do. It's an absolute blast to play. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not much more to say besides smash, massive physical damage, unstoppable, stun lock off SP1, even more damage uh, off of the SP3. All right, let's move on to the number three champion. All right, number three, everything Hulk is in Smash, Blunt, Force, Physical Damage, Photon is in Elegant, right? No, uh, no surprise, this is the Daddy Long Legs DLL champion. Uh, she counters Miss, like right out of the gate. Her medium attacks counter Miss, really, really great. And then when she gets in her pure energy form, I think none of her attacks can miss, if I remember correctly. She has very good damage. She does have like that ramp and the carry over from fight to fight. So sometimes if you can get her into her ramp right away, her damage is going to cross as being absurd. Uh, she can parry non-contact attacks. I love that sort of versatility and relevant utility put into a champion. She is my favorite dual threat, I guess between her and Domino. It depends if I'm feeling lucky that day or not. Bring her in, and then if my opponent drafts, you know, a Mantis, and they've got a champion, like a uh, Mystic champion, or they bring in a Shuri, she's, Photon is like, yeah, I think she actually is my favorite Shuri counter, I guess, outside of Cosmic Ghost Rider, in the game, because she just dominates Shuri. Like, what makes Shuri a stall or a threat or annoying? Photon just handles, right, with the parrying of the non-contact attacks. She's amazing. She's great. She's so versatile, so relevant for our game. I took mine to rank three at low sig. I have no complaints about it. I use her defensively. I use her offensively. I use her in quest. I use her literally in every single mode of the game. And she is a very good defender as well. She's obviously not moving down, uh, not anytime soon. And one of the champions above her is only available as a six star. So it might just be a matter of time. All right, let's move on. Scorpion at number two, I, you know, I think he has a very strong uh, argument for being number one. The main reason why he's not is he's only as available as a six star. We've talked about this and, I'm, and hopefully you've seen the other videos, so I'm not going to elongate the point. But, you know, as time goes on, he's going to struggle to keep up. The thing with him is, though, is he's still doing OK in Battlegrounds. He's still an annoying defender with that stupid evade. I really hate his evade. It just feels cheap. But he's got the Venom synergy, which is basically making him a seven star. Like, like I, it's wild that that got into the game. I love it. It's a blast. It's fun. And if if that's why he won't come out as a seven star, command just remove the synergy from the seven star. You do it with other champions. Like you have champions where they don't get the synergy as a three star. Just do it with him as a seven star. Just make the seven star scorpion not get the Venom synergy. It, like, if that's why he's not coming as a summon star, just do that. We still have an amazing champion with the ability, uh, shifting ability of his own immunities and of damage sources, which is very powerful, and that's probably why he's not coming as a summon star. Uh, but it adds tremendous versatility. I think it's helpful to mature accounts, right? Because he's powerful. And it's also really helpful to up and coming accounts because they can take one champion and cover all these, uh, a variety of places really, really well. I'm also, I think, explaining why he's not coming as a seven star. Uh, when you get him awakened, he can block those unblockable attacks, right? I think you have to have the taunt up, which is off of his SP1. And then, of course, you can go to the SP2 and get some really nice healing back, which is phenomenal, phenomenal battlegrounds. I really do enjoy Scorpion. 
uh, quite a bit. And I hope he does come as a seven star. I don't think he himself is necessarily broken. He's very OP though. And I do think the Venom synergy, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. I love it. It's fun. But I can get why they don't, uh, why we don't have a seven star Scorpion in the game right now. All right, let's move on to number one, uh, All By Herself. I will always remember the first month I covered her in the monthly tier list, right? And I remember saying, like, here's where we're starting her. And I always start off, I try to always start off very conservative with the champion's initial rankings because I, I don't want to, if I'm going to be wrong, I'd rather be wrong down and promote a champion than say, oh, they're amazing, they're great. And then you guys go out and you buy crystals and do all those things or use your really important weekends or your work weeks to grind out an arena. And then we're like, oh, I was wrong. They're not that good. I'm sorry, right? So we start off really conservative with her, and but I recall saying, the champion can go passively unblockable, unstoppable, and indestructible all at the same time and seem to get to that relatively quickly again after it goes on cooldown. We're going to have space for it. We're going to find uses. And oh my God, we definitely have. She is in the conversation for the best seven-star champion in the game on her own, not just in her class. In the game. And I'm excited to talk about that when we do the top 30s. I did compile the list. I'm obviously aware of what it looks like, but I've kind of forgotten at the moment. I also see she came out in September of 2024 or 22. She is not slowing down, and I don't think she ever will slow down. Indestructible, unstoppable, unblockable, on a relatively quick cooldown, even with what feels like a change to infuriate. She's still amazing. She can get to her special three and in fights in battlegrounds before tough defenders can ever th throw a special thanks to her suppression, uh, supp suppression debuff, which is lowering the combat power rate of the defender. She's blunt force powerful. I absolutely love this champion. I think they did a phenomenal job with her. And, uh, and she throws a chair off the special three. And as I like to say when streaming, why have a chair if you're not going to throw it? She is definitely number one. And if she wouldn't, I would be scared to tell her that she's not. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what we think we got right. Let me know what we think we got wrong. My voice is very much starting to go as I try to finish up these videos before I head on vacation. I hope you're enjoying them. I have a blast doing them. It's a really nice, it's not a break from doing the monthly tier list every single month. But it is a nice way to refresh them and talk about some champions that we obviously just don't have time to talk about every month. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.